Are you ready for the lightning round of demos from Appstra? I hope so, because the Appstra operating system automates every single life cycle stage and, you know, design, build, deploy, validate, operate. And it's a bit too much to digest in one sitting. I've done it often. And we decided to break it down for these into these easily digestible five minute or so chunks because we're here to help. Okay, so let's get to it. The first part is the design stage. Now check this out, we're actually automating the whole design of your network, okay? Nobody's doing this, it's really cool. Okay, so now this is a real demo, by the way. This is actually, um, you can actually look here, here's a pod, um, and actually it's, these are real switches, uh, virtual switches though, but they're real. But uh, we're gonna go back to the design stage, right? So we're gonna design um, a template, okay? Now a template uh, is, is, is effectively a reference architecture, okay? This is how we build networks. And we know architects have been doing this for a long time, and they create, you know, they get a lay of the land, how our network's being built, um, they talk to all the vendors and you know in the early days you know you could just listen to Cisco they'll tell you how to build networks or maybe you were smart enough or um, uh, you had the luxury to go shop it elsewhere uh, and you would come up with some other designs um, but I think now and probably since Arista showed up and got a really competitive in the data center space uh, you, the, the jury's back and the way you build networks is via a class two stage BGP based leaf spine design. Okay, right. I, mean, I think I think everybody agrees with that. And if you don't agree with that, uh, drop us a note, and we'd love to have that argument or discussion. Which we, we should say. But uh, if you accept that that we, that's how they build networks, then great. And this is how we are building reference architectures. Okay. But there are things involved when you do that um, that we need you know input on. And, you know, you just it's not and it's sort of one design fits all um, in the data center space. You could argue that. Um, but certainly there's different scale levels and redundancy and stuff like that. And that's what we go through here. Okay. So now back to templates. Now template, if we want to design a new template, um, there's really two ways to do it. We can say create template. Okay. And you can do either rack based or server based. Okay. So when I build a, I, 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 maybe I want like 10 HPC racks and I want five layer three compute racks. Uh, and that's kind of the rack based way. Servers, you say, listen, I have a thousand servers. I'm trying to build a data center and I'm going to be able to serve a thousand, um, build it for a thousand servers. Okay. So let's, let's just do rack based here, um, for now. And, um, okay. So now we're back in here. Um, and, and so we'll call this, uh, demo, um, reference architecture. Okay. And are you going to connect the edge via layer two or layer three? Everybody's got their little preference there. So uh, really up to you. We give the option to both. Um, you know, when you start running containers and you're running routing protocols on the end device, well, you need layer three. Uh, if you're just running servers that are maybe trunking, you know, dot one X or whatever, um, then layer two is fine. Okay. Uh, routing policy. Do you want the, the, the leaf switches to have the full routing table or you just want the default route? Uh, most of the default routes fine. DHCP, do you want a DHCP service? Probably not, but maybe you do. Who knows? We have the option to do that or not. Okay. Um, okay. Now racks. So if you go to the racks and you see, okay, I want to build. Um, this is really how you're going to build your reference architecture. And it's kind of cool because we have these racks. We already populated these, but you can create your own. It doesn't matter. But let's just say, okay, I have these HPC high performance compute. Okay. So I want five of those. Okay. So let me add those, okay? Okay, now we're gonna build this on the fly as we're looking here, okay? And we actually calculate the amount of bandwidth that you need, which will kind of be interesting later when we figure this out, um, when we figure out the whole design. Okay, but what else do I want? Well, you know, I also want some, you know, standard layer three compute, okay? And maybe I want 10 of those, okay? So let's add those. And great, and then I got, um, and then MC lag compute. You know these guys who are dual homed, right? Uh, maybe I want four of the uh, four of those. Okay, so okay, there you go. There I got. Now see this. I have a, this is still red, right? When things are red, it means you have to populate more stuff. Okay, so this is what it looks like. No, no one's going to do this because it's a single spine. Who does that, right? Well, so here I have external routers. Okay, so external router shows how I'm going to get out of this new pod I'm building. Maybe to the internet, or maybe just to your legacy device. Uh, you legacy infrastructure. So give me four of those and for now. It's not going to all go to the same spot. We'll change that in a second. But I want to connect to 40 gig. 
okay? And I can connect to the spine, or I can connect to one of the leaves, but, you know, let's connect off the spine for now, okay? Uh, okay, now spine, what am I going to look at? Well, spine, it needs 168 40 gig ports, okay? Well, fair enough. So now, if you see here, here are your options, okay? And these are, you notice the AOS. AOS means that just, the, we, we haven't assigned vendors yet, right? Remember, we're vendor agnostic. So, we're building this that can support any vendor. So, we don't want to tie to a vendor quite yet. Now, now most vendors have uh, 32 by 40 ports, right? The Broadcom base uh, switches, right? So maybe that'll do it for us. And we want, I like four, um, and you see we're trying to build this out here, okay, like that. So you have four, um, great. But that's only 128 ports, and we need 168. So that's not going to get it done. So maybe there's some other port. We can, oh, here's 64 by 40. I like that one. And I can do four of those too, right? I can also do two. Let's see. No, two, it says, no, that's not enough. Okay, how about three? I could do three, and that actually gives me enough for my data center, right? And it's up to you if you like the idea of having three or not, okay? Now, external routers, I told you I have four ports now, so that looks a little, I mean, I'm just like cement. I like cement, symmetry, right? So now the external routers are connected here, and there'll be more than one router. You're not going to have a single point of failure, but just for the purpose of design. Okay, so everything looks green here now. So cool, let me create this. And let's see what he says. Okay, so um, I have a, now I have a new template called Demo Ref Architecture. Okay, this kind of summarizes what we chose here. Okay, you can go in and change this after effect too. Um, the rack types I got four MC lag, I got ten layer three compute, five layer two. Great. Um, this is how external routers, and this is what it's going to look like. Okay, that's it. We we designed it. That's the end of the stage. But if you wait ten more seconds, I'm going to show you the next stage, which is actually the build stage. And that's really cool. We actually create all the configurations by just pressing some buttons. We choose the vendors too. Um, and then we can change from one vendor to another. So hopefully I'll see you in 10 seconds. Otherwise, come back um, in another time. Okay, thank you. Okay, welcome to the Astra Lightning round of demos part two, where we're gonna focus on the build stage of the network lifecycle management. Okay, so remember that reference architecture, the template that we just built. Okay, well, that is a theoretical way to build networks and the way your firm's going to build networks. Well, now we're actually going to build them. And how do we actually build them? Well, we create things called blueprints. Okay, so here's an already well, blueprint we built before, which I believe I showed you, and it's just a very simple one. But what I want to show you is actually how to build a new one from scratch. So, and based on the reference architecture that we built before. So, create blueprint, we'll call it demo blue. Or I mean, really, demo DC, uh, New Jersey, uh, Newark uh, one. Okay, in case you have multiple Newark data centers, uh, and the template is going to be demo reference architecture. Okay, now this is what we designed already. Remember, this is following the architecture standard, so that's good. But this is actually a building of uh, a network based on that standard, and it's going to look like this. Great. Okay, so we say create. And it starts building some scaffolding, which I love saying. It's a cool word. And when it's done, you're going to see a lot of red. And red just means we need to fill in a lot more detail because there's building specific things here, okay? There's vendor specific things, cabling specific things, okay? So here it is again. Uh, we could show off the servers if you really want to see them. See? Gorgeous. I actually really like that UI. Uh, okay, so. Here are the, all the items that we need to fill in because we can't. We can't. We, we, we want to make sure we understand where you want us to pull from, namely IP address and BGPAS information. Okay, so up here we actually have resources defined. So IP pools we can define locally here, which maybe you assigned in an IPAM, or we can actually uh, look link this programmatically through an API to talk to your IPAM directly. Okay, so we have all these created already, so I don't want to go ahead and, and, and reinvent the wheel there. Um, so we go back to here and we say, okay, cool. And and we, oh, I'm sorry, we have the same thing with BGPAS, all right? So you just create pools there. So we go through here and we say, okay, cool, choose a pool. We can do individually or just choose them both. For the purpose of the demo, we'll just choose both and we don't have to wait till the other one's done. You just keep going like this, great. Okay, now loopbacks, right? So we need a loopback everywhere, right? Now, now these are slash 32s, as we well know, and uh, AOS is smart enough to figure that out. And then the leaves, same deal. There's a bunch of those, okay. And then these here, the spine leaves, all of these links, they need slash 30s, right? Well, again, AOS is smart enough to do that, so it grabs it from those pools. And external router connectivity, you know, these, it gets red here. And, and yeah, there'll be more than one router, don't worry about that, but... Um, this is where you assign, oh, I'm sorry, I missed something there. So we say yes, choose it from there. Again, you'd probably choose one.
tool, not the whole thing. And then finished here. Great. Okay. So all these are green. That's great. But now we see something poking out here, which is red. Okay. What is that? Device models. Remember, we haven't chosen a vendor yet. No idea what vendor we're going to use yet. Okay. But here we are. It's time to choose. It says we got our design. We got everything configured. So now we go and shop it. We say, okay, Mr. Cisco rep, talk to me. See what I'm trying to build here? I know what I want to build. I don't want to do any design that you tell me to. I want to do my own design. So if you guys can help me here, then great. Give me a price for this. Okay, so they give you a bomb and a price. Cool. Then you go to Mr. Arista and say, do say the same thing. And then you go to Mrs. Juniper uh, and ask the same thing. And then at the last minute you say, oh, by the way, Cumulus, what would you do? And you, you get a price on that. And you're like, wait, what? And then Cumulus is something ridiculously cheap. Uh, because you have to also get the hardware too separately, let's be clear. So regardless, you figure all that out, and now you're ready to assign models. Okay, so for the purpose of the first build, you do it, you can do batch, but you can totally do this one by one. So what's nice about this is we just we just present the items that fit your requirements. There's only two that we have right now in, in the system. So it's a Cisco and Arista in this case, okay? Doesn't mean there can't be a Juniper in there too. We just don't have it populated in this particular demo. Okay, uh, and here's the leaves, and you see the options there. Great, we use Cumulus for those leaves. And then for the, the compute, well, they're running MLAG, we're gonna use, you see all the different options in here. Let's, let's do Cisco, okay. And then for layer three, we wanna use, we'll just throw up there, here's an Arista, okay. Great, so now those are all assigned, and that's great. And then we also have these routers over here that we need to assign. So this is for external routers. So this was a pool, we, we actually assigned this over here too, see external routers, uh, we created them. Remember that's not critical for the pod, just you know, trying to get off the pod. So we have them assigned here. Uh, we could just say, uh, Example one router you brought, and these names are you know are pretty lame for a demo, but you get my point. Great, and then our whole thing is shaping up here. This is still red for some reason. I must have not hit save. Okay, so let's just hit save there. Okay, so when I did that, at least I think I hit that. This is really not. Oh, there it is. Sorry, I had myself. Okay, so that's great. So now they're all assigned. Now watch this. Now normally you'd say, okay, cool, I got this all assigned. Now I'm going to actually assign a configuration to them. But what is so cool is that while we were talking, I already came up with the configs. There they are. Okay, this is the spine config. See this? It's already rendered. And notice this is an Arista uh, feature. Okay. Now, but what about? Let's go over here. And what is this thing? Okay, let's check it out. Now let's see what, what, what format this is. It's also an Arista. Okay. And what about this guy? And this guy is a, I think this is Cisco. You get my point. Okay. Yeah, let's see. There's a Cisco. Now what if I wanted to change it on the fly? We can do that. You ready? Watch. Here we chose a Cisco. No, I want to go to Cumulus, okay? Boom, said save. Great. Now I go back here, look at the device. I say, show me that config again, please. Ah, there you go. There's a config. You know how long that would take manually? We just did it literally pressing a button. Come on, you got to love that. That's cool, right? Okay. Now, something also that's neat is we go here, we go to links, and this shows you everything, how everything's cabled up. So, yes. The dreaded cut sheet that people hate putting together, but is necessary when you mount this stuff, right? And when you actually physically install it. So now we have it right here. We're done. Here you go. You give it to your smart hands, and you say, here you go. Could you please cable it up this way? Here are the names of the devices, and so on. Okay, that's the end of the build stage, but we're just getting started. Wait another 10 seconds for the next part where we actually automate the deploy stage, which is what a lot of people call the automation. And we, could, we just call provisioning or config management. Salt, Ansible, Puppet, Chef are examples of, of people doing this part of it. And it's a critical part of automation. But as you've seen, if you watch the other videos and future videos, you'll see that there's so much more to automation. Okay, so see you shortly.
So you design your reference architecture, you built the configurations across single vendor or multiple vendors, and now it's time to actually deploy what you've staged. And I, I think, again, this is what most product people call automation, the other vendors out there. But as you'll see, it's just a slice of what we do. Okay? So now when he were here, right, we have these stage configurations, right? We went through all this. We showed you how to configure IP addresses, choose which models you wanted to use, and so on and so forth, right? Okay, so we want to config. But first what has to happen is you actually have to buy the switches and obtain the switches. So when you get the switches, you smart hands, cables them up, right? As we discussed, you would cable them up per this, this uh, cut sheet that you have right here, right? And we have a spreadsheet version or this version. Um, and when you do that, uh, the switches come out of boot mode and they, they're they looking for a ZTP server. So using DHCP, there's a little option there, it tells them, it sends them to our ZTP server, which is actually right here. Uh, it's called the Aeon ZTP server. And this is a universal ZTP server. This is not a unique, uh, Cisco has you know their Pope, and Arista has their ZTP, and Cumulus has theirs, and Juniper has theirs. You you actually need your own ZTP server for each one of those vendors, and that's silly. So we actually came up with this ZTP server universally, and it's free. And in fact, it's available right here on the GitHub. The GitHub uh, ZTP right here, and ZTPS, okay? So that's the way we contribute to giving back, because we care about the community, while we also are a commercial entity okay so that's great right so now things are booting up and we come to this device page and they come up in different stages now what you're looking for because you know what stage you know the, the switches you're looking for because you have the serial numbers already is you're looking for ones that come up in active mode and you see this device is currently part of the blueprint that you're expecting well, that's great. Okay, so now let's go back to that blueprint. And it could also come up as you can stock them, get ready for them, they can come maintenance mode. There's a whole bunch, and we can do a whole other um, video on that. Okay, but for now, um, let's assume everything comes up per, that you're expecting them, and you're at the stage, and you say, okay, well, I'm good. I got them all in, and now I want to deploy them. Okay, well, uh, we have not committed them yet. In fact, it says nothing's been committed. This whole blueprint has not been deployed. So let's commit it. And you ready? This is how you commit the whole thing. You press this button. Okay. Now it's com it's successfully committed. This light should go. This this yellow uh, danger button should go away. And then you become active, and that's it. Okay. So then that's it. The end of the stage. So that's the end of the deploy stage. That's it. That was easy, right? Okay, so we're almost done here. Other than the most exciting stage, the validate slash operate stage. And this is the stage you are in for 99% of the time. So that's why we save the best for last. So wait a few seconds or come back later and check it out. Thank you. Okay, so now we're in the last lifecycle stage. Again, some would argue this is the most important one. It's the operate, or the validate stage. And this is where AppStruck continues to outshine anything else that's there. Because we have we tie all these stages together. This isn't yet another tool. This isn't like Nagios over here or SolarWinds or What's Up Gold or HPNA or Spectrum, whatever it is people are using in the operate stage. No, this is still AOS. And this isn't a model of your network. This is your actual network. In real time, AOS addresses whether or not the network is performing the way I want it to. And that's another way of describing intent. What is your intent? It's the way I want my network to behave. If it doesn't perform that way, I'm going to let you know. If it does, then I'm going to leave you alone. I'm not going to send you a bunch of false positives and just dump you a bunch of information that you'll look at later. No, no, I, I will tell you if the network is behaving. If, it, if you don't hear from me, then things are good. Okay, but let's show you some things. Okay, first of all, so this is what the, the main screen is. This is your dashboard, okay? Well, now we're, we're live, right? And, and these are all the parameters we're monitoring. So while I explain these, let me just break a couple things because it becomes much more interesting when you break things. Because when everything's green, you can't really prove stuff, okay? So this is just my Cloud Labs modeling. It's going to break things in a little bit. And I'm actually making a config change, too, to show you uh, some interesting things there, too, okay? So these are all the things we monitor, like liveness. You know, everybody does that, fine. But, then, but keep in mind, this is via agents that sit on the switch, 
Okay, this is not SNMP polling. We put during the ZTP process that we went through before, we install agents on the switch. Okay, and these agents are constantly validating whether or not the switch is behaving the way you hope it would. Okay, and then we report back only when there are anomalies, like we're seeing right now. There seems to be a problem. Okay, there seems to be a routing problem. So here's something that people don't really monitor that much. We're monitoring the routing table because we know what the routing table is supposed to look like. We know there's supposed to be a thousand routes or a hundred routes, whatever the number is. And if there's 101, we're going to let you know. If there's 99, we're going to let you know. If there's 100, we'll say everything's fine. Okay. We also look at uh, BGP status, obviously, right? So this is, I mean, yes, the up downs and all the layer two stuff that we look at, but also we go deeper into the whole fabric to make sure it's behaving the way it is. So let's just see how an outage just just happened, and we go through here. Now we're down here in the node status, and you see the bigger the circle, the more problems that device has. Okay, so it looks like spine one has some problems here, uh, and then these leaves have some problems. So I don't know what's going on. So we can drill down on any of these. Okay. Um, but whenever I see a cabling problem, that gets me, you know, um, you know my, my, my worries up. So let's see. If we go to physical here, we can see this whole thing has got issues, right? So, so if you go to the anomaly page, you'll see that we're expecting something, okay? And the difference is that something's down, okay? So if you look here, the expected is up and the actual is down. And what is that? It's BGP, okay? So that's not good, right? Uh, so if we double click on one of these guys, um, sorry, it didn't work. And we go into here, this shows you the physical cabling, okay? We show you what's present and what's absent. Because remember, we know the way it's supposed to be cabled. Well, look at here. It looks like these cables were cross wired for some reason, okay? And we can do this in the beginning, but we can also do this all the time. Somebody knocked out a cable and maybe put it in the wrong way. Okay, this is actually a really hard thing to find if you think about it, right? Because the interfaces are still up. See these up arrows are still up, but we don't make them green because they're not up in the right way. They should be cabled the right way, okay? So that's an example of some telemetry that we're providing based on your intent. See, red violating your intent, okay? So let me just get rid of that one back here. Um, because I want to show you what we also monitor for is if people make changes and they don't tell you about it. Okay, so now we're not taking away AOS, we're not taking away um, your command line, all right? People would freak out. Now, maybe when you're more comfortable, we can just, you know, click that button and, and take away command line or overwrite if somebody changes something. Right now, we don't. What we do is we alert. Somebody made a change, so what happened? Well, config deviation, we see. Uh, okay, so let's just take a look at the config. Okay, so da 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 da. Aha, uh -huh, somebody did something. Okay, in this case, they added a route. All right, now that's running right now, and, and, and if you're comfortable, then we can just press another button and say, get rid of the change you just saw. But in the interim, uh, we don't do that. Okay, so that is the configuration change, and I'll try to back out that guy while we're still talking here. Okay, and go back to your dashboard, and things are resolving. It takes a little bit with LDP and whatnot to, to converge, and you'll see everything back goes to green. Okay, so so that, that, that's the end, really. We showed you design, build, deploy, and operate, and we automate all of them in one closed-loop way. This is the way automation systems work. Okay, self-driving cars, uh, autopilots on planes. Okay, and we do it in a vendor-agnostic way. We're not going to ever say, "Well, this only works on the Cisco. This only works on Aristo." Okay. Now you may have some parameters that you want to use, and we have ways to deal with that through configlets, which we didn't really go through. So if you want to say, "Hey, by the way, I want to use lands on Aristo," it's kind of cool. Well, we have ways to deal with that too. So you don't have to think that you know it's the least common denominator, which automation systems get the bad rap for. And so we have ways to deal with that as well. Okay, so we showed you the design, the build, the deploy, and the operate, and we automated all of them. And we do it in a vendor agnostic way. And we treat the network like a distributed system that it is, not this box by box thing that people have been doing for decades. And we're just getting started. As our founder, David Sheridan, said, we built a skyscraper, or we're building one, and the foundation literally took years to build. But now we're on the third or fourth floor, we're targeting the data center network. But think about this. Why can't we do the same exact thing what I showed you today and in the other videos? Why can't I do that for firewalls? Why can't we do that for load balancers? Or go out to the WAN or in the campus? There's no reason we can. And there's a ton of stuff I haven't even showed you yet that we have today. We can ship today. This is just a quick synopsis of what we're doing 
for your network or how we're automating it today, okay? So drop a note to sales at after.com and let's have a chat.